Doing the same moves over and over again is only gonna get you so far. Your body responds best to variation and progressive overload. Hey, what is happening people? Woodsy Workout here, and in today's video, I'm going to provide you with some supplementary exercises to improve each of the Hyrox stations and your running, and these are moves that you can do in most regular gyms. Now, there is a time and a place for the Hyrox specific movements. You wanna get efficient at them and be able to handle the volume because there are a lot of reps in Hyrox, so building them into your program more and more as you get closer to your race is important. However, uh, doing just those movements and in, under the same conditions and format year round is only gonna get you so far. Your body responds best to variation and progressive overload. The Hyrox weights themselves may feel heavy, but you're doing like 100 plus reps uh, on them. So if you was just to do a, three to 12 reps, you could do much heavier. Uh, and that's kind of what we're gonna focus on today. Uh, moves that can increase your strength. The stronger you are, the easier each rep is going to be. And the better your cardio and, and muscular endurance, the longer and faster you can go. So I'll cover the cardio and the muscular endurance in another video. Today we are focusing on the strength side. And by the way, I have done a deep dive video on each of these stations on the technique and a few other training tips. So you can check those out on my channel. And if you want more guidance on how to include all of these exercises correctly within a program, you can go to coactiveperformance.com where I have uh, training plans and coaching options available to you. So station one, the ski erg. Primarily, it was working your lats, core, and triceps, and your calves, but you also get it a little bit in the quads, uh, your lower back, and also your traps. In High Rocks, we're skiing for one kilometer, and it's at the start of the race, so it's not really a sprint. When you're sprinting on the ski erg, you, you really jump up and, and drive down. We still want the weight in the balls of our feet at the top of the pool, but you don't need to jump on every stroke. So the calves shouldn't really be your limiting factor. I think the most important is the lats and the core. If you get your technique right, um, these give you the most amount of power and your triceps should be strong enough to just hold through that pull and, um, and complete the movement at the end of the stroke. But they shouldn't be your main movers. So if your skiing looks a little bit like this, it doesn't matter how strong you get your triceps, your lats will be much stronger. So best exercises to improve the ski, chin-ups and lat pull-downs, uh, and keep varying your grip and your width with those. The dumbbell pullover is great for increasing range of motion uh, with overhead pulling. And then med ball slams give you some nice and explosive power. Uh, and then I like these tricep uh, extensions in the rack to work your triceps while still keeping all of your core and your lats engaged. Onto the sled push, this is obviously predominantly legs, so quads, hamstrings, calves and glutes, but it also requires a lot of bracing through your midsection and your arms. I highly recommend the shoulders through stance. You can check that out on my deep dive video. Um, and if you don't like it, you're probably not doing it quite right, so take a look. The best exercises for the sled push are front squats. They work um, the legs predominantly, the quads, uh, but you get that midline bracing, and once your technique is good, you can load these pretty heavy and get a real good strength stimulus from it. Back squats work well as well, uh, and because with the push, we are working our legs individually. Single leg movements like split squats and step ups are great uh, and tend to get the glutes a little more involved. I like the uh, zercher position in a lunge or squat. 
It may feel kind of uncomfortable, but it works those muscles we need for that very strong sled position. For the sled pull, again, technique plays a big role. And if you're doing the um, walking back method, which I would highly recommend, um, check out this video again if you're not, but um, then you are gonna be using your posterior chain, so your hamstrings, uh, lower back, and then it will start to build up in your quads from walking it back, and a good bit in your forearms and biceps from gripping and pulling. So a real all-rounder, this the sled, push, uh, sled pull. Good exercises for these are rack pulls and deadlifts. They will give you that drive and that pulling power. Sled drags are good to work the quads. Uh, if you don't have a sled, cable squat rows are one of my favorites uh, and they work really well. Um, if you've got a rope or a thick grip attachment, that is perfection. Uh, a real good bonus there. Onto the burpee broad jumps now. The burpee broad jumps are very cardiovascularly demanding. Um, the jumps themselves will kind of get your feet and your calves and your tibialis, which is the muscle at the front of your shin. Um, so if that's aching after a, a session, it's, it's from the burpee broad jumps. And you can work on these with tib raises, calf raises, um, skips and skipping and pogo jumps are, are really good. The, the actual burpee itself kind of taps into your chest and triceps, so bench press and dips will help you push off the floor easier. But you don't have to be doing a strict push-up. Um, the rules state that your chest needs to touch the floor, but you can um, lead with the hips and roll down, and then roll back up, and that will save a massive amount of tension in the upper body. However, Doing this along with that step up um, technique, it requires a decent amount of mobility. So as well as those strength exercises that I mentioned, you should throw in some upward dogs, cat cows, uh, and hip openers to allow you to efficiently move through those um, positions. The rower works a range of muscle groups. A lot of people are anterior dominant, meaning they use their quads a lot during the row, but if we can strengthen the um, glutes and the hamstrings and the lower back, we can generate a lot of power from our posterior chain and offset that quad burn. So movements like Romanian deadlifts, back extensions, uh, hamstring curls can really help with that. The end of the movement, of course, you row into your body, so any form of weighted row can help um, with those. I like seated row um, in a slightly leant back position, and again, you can you can vary your grip and your width to um, to keep a nice variation with that. The farmer carries tax your grip, your traps, uh, your rear delts, and your core. This is where going for a heavier movement to get used to that bracing position can really help. So trap bar deadlifts, heavier, shorter farmer carries are really good, as well as uh, rows to neck and reverse flies to strengthen the backs of your shoulders and create stability when you're walking with the weight. The lunges, this is where you get a real muscular burn. The lunges work your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes and your adductors, as well as, of course, your core. And the big thing with the lunges is your body is constantly trying to stabilize. So at each time it comes in contact with the ground, it's trying to find that stability and then exert force to push into the next step. So squats are great at generating power but strong glutes and adductors will keep that knee stable, from uh, so stop it from shaking side to side and allow you to exert more force and create more speed. So split squats, um, Copenhagen planks and single leg deadlifts tap into those stabilizing muscles and the more stable your lunges are, the faster you can go. The final station is the wobbles. These primarily work your legs and your shoulders. If you have good positioning, you can keep your chest upright when you squat down and that stops the ball from dragging you forward. 
So working on a front squat or close stance goblet squat can help increase your strength in that position as well as working on your range of motion. You want to fully extend your legs at the top and that hip extension helps transfer power up into your upper body. So hip raises and dumbbell thrusters can help with that transfer of power. And finally, the shoulders can be a weak link in your wobbles. So incline or overhead press are great moves as well as seated wobbles, which are surprisingly difficult, so give them a try. The final thing that is often overlooked is all the running. The running is definitely cardiovascular, but you can and you should do some strength exercises to help your running. Now we've covered a few already. Calf raises and tib raises help strengthen the lower legs for impact. Uh, single leg deadlifts can help stabilize the hips and work the hamstrings. But another couple for you are Poliquin step downs. These work the um, VMO muscle, which is like the muscle on the inside of the quad. Uh, and that controls the end range of knee extension and helps the patella or, or your kneecap track in line. Uh, the other one is uh, hip flexors. So strong hip flexors are really important. Uh, if you have weak hip flexors when you're running, you won't lift your knee very well uh, and then it, your legs will start to drag. So it, it creates inefficiency when you're running. Um, and to work on your hip flexors, lying knee tucks or single leg knee drives can really help. Okay, so hopefully that has given you a few things to try and add to your strength routines and progress your weak spots. Try them yourself, let me know how you get on. If you want more guidance on how to integrate them or you want a nice well-balanced program that includes them all in a periodized way that builds up to a race, you can go to coactiveperformance.com where I have plans and I do periodized programming and one-to-one -one online coaching Again, that's coactiveperformance.com. Anything else, you can reach me on Instagram at Woodsy Workout, where you can find plenty more tips and tricks on all things health and fitness. Until next time, peace.